Are you ready for another exciting pulse pounding butt slapping installment of Funny Verses, everyone's favorite podcast segment? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you primed? Are you hyped? Are you psyched? Are you revved up and ready to go? Are you ready, buddy? Are you ready? Yes. Yes, well, I then, am. Without any, without any further ado, Inky's up for the classy stuff. It's time once again for Funny Verses. And now here is your host, <laughs> Andy Williams, take it away, buddy. So, Facebook. <laughs> Fucking Facebook. Oh, did yeah. you survive? Did you survive the the twenty one the twenty twenty one crash of Facebook? I I I only go on Facebook uh, nowadays to primarily to uh, promote either my story time uh, or the podcast. Uh, the only time I will ever n not advertise myself is uh, when I post a video on my post a picture on my stories. Yeah, I've been trying to post pictures of myself in dresses on my Facebook story, just just to as an exercise in coming out as a male leaning gender fluid individual yes i i just feel that it's important for me to be out and let people know that hey sometimes i wear dresses and it's not a big deal but but yeah uh facebook and instagram were down uh coincidentally but, the same time that uh a a whistleblower was coming out with damning information b uh a rumor got around that there was a big data breach and people were selling uh, they were selling information on the dark web and see the day that Facebook and Instagram and whatever went down was the same day that Facebook owed a bunch of uh, business information to the U.S. government as part of an investigation. So, yeah, what a strange coinky dink that all of those things would happen when Facebook and Instagram were down. Yeah. 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 First off, full disclosure, I never look at people's stories. Uh, yeah, I know. It shows me who sees them. I know I know you post them. Like, sometimes I accidentally hit one, and I'm reminded by why I never look at stories. Because it pops up, and I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to... And I don't see so great these days. And I'm trying to figure out what it is that just popped up, and then it slides away. You can pause them. There is a pause button on the top. And it slides you... away to somebody else's story. Yeah. Like, no. I, no. So, so, so I keep away. I don't do the my stories. Yeah, that's oh, fine. I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we all, except for, uh, 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 who isn't aging right now? Ant-Man. Ant-Man's not aging. Ant-Man? What's his name? Paul Rudd. Yeah. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Paul yeah, Rudd. No, 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 he is not. But come on, Keanu Reeves is getting a bit rough around the fucking edges these days. Yeah, he is. Can't wait for Speed 3. He'll agree to it one of these days. Yeah. That was my wife's idea. Uh, that uh, Keanu Reeves has agreed to so many sequels. Yeah. That I wouldn't be surprised if we got a, a you know, point breakier. I don't know. <laughs> uh, or li liaisoni. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh so yeah. So hooray. Whoa, Max, can you I'm give me a some French tea? aristocrat? No, the other one. The junk drawer. The junk drawer. No, no, right next yeah, that one. You don't know which one's our junk drawer? 
It's the drawer with all the junk in it. I am shocked that you didn't instantly know that, but that's okay. If anything, it's my fault. I'm the parent. Uh, so, Bonnie. Yes. Uh, so my wife is gone, so, of course, I've been partying my ass off. Uh, you know, every night, just so many different women and, uh, and stuff. Oh, man, it's been like Playboy Mansion all up in here. Wait, that was a weird, that was weird. That was well, weird, the play. No, I'm just... I'm I'm just thinking about in 2020 the idea of the Playboy Mansion, you know? Yeah. The idea that like, oh, here's where a rich person lives with the with the 65 younger women that he fucks. Yeah. It's fine. This is totally okay in our uh, in our uh, current society. Like, how fucked up is that? But. So, so... Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's strange, because, like, because that... Like, again, that's something that at at first is really kind of groundbreaking and breakthrough and a part of the whole sexual revolution. And then you just start coming back around again. It's almost like, well, we don't... We just don't need that anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Just like, just like, like right now, it's very important for people to speak out about their sexualities because they have been so silenced for so long. Okay? Yeah. Okay? But if we ever get to a rational place in society, and that's really fucking doubtful, but if there is a bright, shiny future then speaking about your sexuality would then become just kind of annoying. Yeah. Because you're not telling me anything. You're like, you might as well say you're Libra. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. It, because it has gotten to a point where it's just a non-issue. Yeah. The way that I used to always look at sexuality is that you know, my sexuality the only people that need to know are me, <coughs> my wife, and the midget that my wife pays to watch us have sex. Those are the only people who need to know about my sexuality. So for yes. the longest time, I wouldn't say I was in the closet, but that I, I don't know, I was just from a different age, and I felt that, you know, your sexuality is, like, if you want to share your sexuality, great. If you want to embrace your sexuality and make it an important part of who you are, that's fine, but I don't have to. Yes. If I don't want to, and I didn't want to. But now I'm trying to come out. Uh, I'm gender fluid. Sometimes I'm a woman. Most of the time I'm a dude. I'm pansexual. I, and I'm also just fabulous. Just period. But I, I I'm think trying. everybody's always known. Yeah. So I'm just, I, I'm, I'm trying to be more out about certain aspects of my life. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, uh, speaking of my wife, my wife is in upstate New York in... Hold on. I nailed it earlier in the show. You did. You Hold did. On. Uh, you got Schenectady. This. Schenectady. Schenectady. All right. Yeah. And the okay, crowd goes so, wild. Yeah. So my wife was one of the, was, uh, my wife didn't start a publishing company, but my wife was one of the people who helped start a publishing company. And it it publishes uh, original work of fan fiction writers, and it's very LGBTQIA friendly. It's called Duck Prince Press. Uh, Hold on a second. Where's where's my is it here? No. It's on my computer. Oh, hold on. Okay. So <laughs> hi everybody. Uh okay, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Gun Violence. This, this while you're looking, 
this new camera really gets great color, dude. Yeah. There you go. That is the logo of Duck Prince Press. It's a duck. That's the Duck Prince Press logo. And, uh... Yeah, so my wife is in New York working with Duck Prince Press. And uh, it's all very impressive. I'm not at all jealous. I went to New York myself. I was seven, and I remember nothing. Yeah. Uh, except I remember uh, a guy peeing in an alleyway. Oh, And that's cool. about it. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my wife's in New York, and uh, she left on Wednesday. She left so early on Wednesday that, that by the time I woke up at 6.30 a.m. to get our youngest ready for school, they were gone. So uh, we've been without Natasha Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and today is uh, Sunday as we are recording this. And I was really excited because tomorrow during the afternoon, Max and I were going to go on a tiny little road trip and we were going to go pick up mom. But uh, there is some nasty ass fucking storms headed our way. Headed I, I to the Midwest. saw that briefly on Twitter as I was passing by. Yeah, there's some nasty storms headed towards uh, uh, Texas and Oklahoma and uh from from 6 p.m. on, there's a flood warning from 6 p.m. to 4 in the morning. Okay. And right now, you know, it's a pretty nice day, but it's starting to get windy as hell. There's also, uh, we're in a possible area where torna tornadoes might appear. Yeah. It, the, the chance is very slim, but there's a possibility that a tornado might come by, which I'm really excited about. I'm really excited to drop a house on a bitch. Yeah. There you go. And then, and then steal her shoes. So... Which is what happens in a tornado. And there'll be uh, little people, like Hornswoggle, and they'll be, like, singing, and I'm really excited about that. Yes, Maxwell? Uh... So, so if the tornado comes, I know what to, to be do. Prepared for a bunch of toast lying everywhere. Yeah. So, so here's what you do in case of a tornado, kids. Now that I've got you here, uh, there are so many tornadoes in in Arizona. Just there's like a tornado a week. So I know so much about tornadoes. So let me tell you what to do: duck and cover. That's what you do. Also, cover yourself with wet newspaper and wait until the blast has subsided. And then, if you see a tornado that's, that's coming your way, this is what you do. Uh, you throw a cow in it. And then the tornado eats up the cow. Just w make sure you throw a tornado and not a shark, because then you got a sharknado on your hands, kids. And you don't want that to happen. I don't know that much about uh, tornadoes, but uh, yeah, so there's a possibility a tornado might come today, and they're saying uh, up to four inches of snow, uh, of, of snow, of fucking rain. The crazy thing is, is that the, with the goddamn global warming, the, the, the tornado season is like March, April, May. And here we are in October, and we could be hit by a tornado, so it's really freaky. The kids are freaking out. Not me, because I am, of course, a rock. Yes. I am just, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm known for being a lot of things. I'm known for being stoic. I'm known for being humble. Out of everyone in the family, I'm probably the most humblest of everyone in the family. So, and then Monday, it's supposed to calm down. But then Tuesday and Wednesday, we're supposed to be hit with more shit. And so Natasha's flight, I think, got canceled because she was flying from Connecticut to Dallas. And apparently, first off, a, a bunch of, I saw on Twitter that just a bunch of flights are getting canceled, number one. And then number two, because of the bad weather, like no one's flying into Texas. Because remember, kids, uh, Oklahoma is the emo haircut of Texas. 
So here's Texas. And we just sort of hang right here. Like, Texas is like, hey, what up? My name's Zach, you know? So, so Texas and I were both getting hit. Texas and Oklahoma are both getting hit with shit. So now the earliest that my wife can come home from New York is Thursday. And I'm super fine with this. Everything's fine. I love taking care of these kids from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. It's not stressful. It's not hard work because it's not work. It's just being a parent and I love it and everything's fine. And my wife's gone for longer. That's fine. I don't need to go to the movies or have a break. Everything is fine. Everything's fine. <coughs> so, so everything's great over here. Uh, Eleanor got <coughs> sick yesterday. Let me tell you about yesterday. Eleanor got sick. She, she woke up. They woke up early and a uh, five-year-old adorable uh they were feeling a bit sick they got a bit of a stomach bug and they're like oh no i need to vomit so they run to the bathroom as fast as they can they run to the bathroom and for whatever reason instead of saying i'm going to vomit in the toilet like a regular person eleanor decides i'm going to vomit in our very small trash can Okay. Or insanely small trash can by the toilet. And in order to open it up, it's got a little foot thing that you push on with your foot. And they tried to press that, and they slipped, and they fell. And the moment that they slipped and fell is the moment that the vomit decided to fly. Basically, my five-year-old turned into a vomit-filled Bellagio fountain. Yes. And as they fall is when it all just rips out. So it just became like, just a, just a, and it just sprayed everywhere. The vomit was spraying so much in the sky that the entire Ocean's Eleven showed up and just gave each other slow nods as Claire de Lune played. And they went about their separate ways after a successful heist. <laughs> so that was so that was fun to clean up. And then uh, Mal wakes up, sixteen years old, and says, "I'm gonna go for a walk." And they went for a walk outside, past the 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 backyard, and to the park. And while they were in the park, they slipped and fell, uh, and they got stickered. So many sharp stickers all over their oh, pants God, yes. and their legs and in their shoe and on their butt. It, there were so many stickers that they called for my help. And I had to pick up my 16-year-old high school teenager and carry them to the house. It, it, like There were so many mini emergencies yesterday that I spent the entire day staring at Maxwell, staring at my 10-year-old. Because the way I figured it, eventually the shit's going to hit the fan and there's going to be a third emergency. <laughs> They're like, Maxwell's going to be like, Dad, watch we juggle these chainsaws or some shit. <laughs> Maxwell's going to be like, what a lighter. I bet this doesn't work. Oops, I lit my bed on fire. Maybe I can put it out with this Gasoline! <laughs> that was a David Bowie reference. Well, but, how is uh, Mal? Is Mal okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, their pants are sitting right in front of me in a bag waiting to be de-stickered. I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, that was fun. They still have splinters to this day. Then I had to rush to the store and buy tweezers because who the fuck knows where my wife has the tweezers. But it's fine that my wife is gone. Everything's fine. I'm not stressed out. Everything is okay. Yeah. I am doing great. Here's the adorable part is that uh, on the first day, once I woke up Eleanor to go to school, Eleanor said, so mommy is gone? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. But hey, dad's here and we're going to have fun. And 
I'm going to, you know, get ice cream and we're going to hang out and it's going to be fun. And Eleanor said, Daddy, can, do you think, can you get your phone and text other mother, my female persona, yeah. can you text yeah. other mother and see if she can come over to uh, f- make me dinner and tuck me into bed? And I'm like, sure. I... I can probably get other mother to show up. And so I on the first, you know, then I pick Eleanor up from school and Eleanor says, Dad, uh, Hunter got a haircut and he let me touch the hair and it was really soft. And today we got to go to music class and uh, we got to watch a video and I don't remember what it was. And then for lunch we had pizza. And I'm like, that's really great. Sounds like you had a wonderful day. Did you get into any accidents? Did you hurt yourself? Nope. Did you get in trouble? Nope. Good. I'm really happy that you had a good day. And then later, right before it's time to cook dinner, I go into the bedroom and I get all dressed up and um, my female persona comes out, which the kids have dubbed other mother, like the creepy mother with the button eyes from the movie Coraline. Yeah. And so uh, Other Mother comes out, and Eleanor, being adorable, said, Other Mother, hi, I missed you. So today at school, Hunter got a haircut, and he let me touch it, and it was really soft. And for lunch, we had pizza, and we got to go to uh, the gym, and we uh, had music class, and it was really fun, and I didn't hurt myself at all. And the reason, and then the reason why they did this is because in their mind, I am literally two different people. And so Eleanor had to tell other mother how their day was because they hadn't told other mother. They just told daddy. And that's fucking adorable. (laughs) And I love that so much. So, yeah, now every night, other mother comes and uh, makes food and tucks them in. And I think it's helping. Yeah, you like it when other mother shows up. Uh, They they drew a picture. And it's right here on a napkin. Not sure why a napkin. But that that is other mother, a.k.a. me. And that's them. And they even spelled out, love uh, uh, other mother, uh, Ellie, says right there. So uh, Eleanor said, Daddy, can you hold this and uh, give it to Other Mother when Other Mother comes tonight? So, Oh, you want to give it to Other Mother? Okay, that's fine. You can absolutely give it to Other Mother because uh, it, it's adorable how good you are at separating. Oh, and you made this one for me. Okay, so uh, which one is Daddy? This one is Daddy? Oh, this is Daddy. That one's me. And this one is Eleanor. Oh, good job. Thank you, Eleanor. I love these drawings. You're really good with napkin art. So, yeah, so that's been me. How are you, Bunny? Well, I don't know. I I mean, it's adorable, but... Is it okay? Eleanor, you know that I'm Mother Mother, right? To see you as two separate... You know? Yeah. You I think that it's I think that it's good. I think that it's cute and I think that it's adorable. You know? I I, I, I like to think that it's the three faces of Foley. The what? Mick Foley was mankind and then <laughs> also dude love and then also cactus jack. That's me. I could be in a Royal Rumble three times. I can be Mr. Steve, Reverend Steve, and other mother. I dig it. Yeah. I think it's cute. Yeah, well, what the hell do I know about kids anyway? You know, but just seeing you as two separate people. I mean, if they, if they could see it the same way as Mick Foley, that's fine, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that's what that is. They know that I'm me, and that I'm still me when I'm a woman. Okay. If anything, I think that's healthy, and other people should be like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, I I could see it that way. 
I was going to get dressed up uh, as Other Mother uh, because it's the Woodmist episode of the Pope on film, but yeah. I was just tired. Didn't want to. Didn't feel like it. They yeah. when when I was trying to come out, not it, it as gender fluid. I dressed up a lot at home, and you know, came out to my wife, came out to my kids, came out to my grown kids, and. It, it, it took, it, and I dressed up a lot because I was finally, you know, coming out and being who I was, and and so I dressed up a lot. But now that I have come out, I don't dress up as much because it's like, okay, I'm gender fluid and I can be a woman, or stay in these fucking pajamas <laughs> and scratch my butt and be a guy. So I, I haven't been dressing up as much, but Eleanor has done a really good job of bringing out the, the female me. Because Eleanor just feels better when there's a mom here and mom's yeah. not here. So other mother is here and it's been helping out and I really like it. I look really good in, uh, in, in an apron. You do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maxwell. Uh-huh. Yes? Oh. It's true. What? It's a compliment and a truth. That is a compliment, and it's true. Thank you, Maxwell. I look good in an apron. Yeah. So that's so that's that's me. That's been this week. How are you, Bunny? Not 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 the best week for you. Not, yeah. not the best. On not the best. scale of one to ten, what would you give it? What, what's the what's the? I don't know. Uh, six or seven. Yeah. My 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 wife. Purchased me uh, a toy. Yeah. And I've been playing with it a lot, and it's been helping me. Let's say it's like a fidget spinner. It's a stress relieving device. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. That's about as much as I, I've, I've, seen. I've seen ads for such products. Yeah. Works so, really great so, on the neck, from what I hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so that's been helping me out a lot, relieve some of the tension. Yeah. So, yay. So that's been me. Cool. Jeannie's still sick, so that's not good. Really? Uh, first episode of Daphne is done. Looks good. Saw it. Really good. Like it. Yeah, quirky. Next one will be better, but, you know, that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, I've been doing a little bit of experimenting in between, so I think that'll that'll be helpful. Yeah. And that's about it. Uh, Woodmas, we're going to have a, a Woodmas thing after the show. It's going to be 5 p.m. Mountain Time, because you do the conversion, man. <laughs> so shortly after we finish with this show, I'm gonna I'm gonna run that. So the Reverend will have a few words to say, and then we're yes. gonna run Plan Nine. Then he's gonna have a few more words to say, and then we're gonna show I woke up early the day I died, and then the Reverend turns into Maxwell or something. Yes. And closes us out. Yes. Good stuff. So, what's on the chap? Uh, it's a short chap. It's a short episode. But it's about a national treasure who deserves a... He's a hero. And we're going to be discussing him. Uh, okay. An unsung hero in American society that more people should be talking about. Well, you've got my curiosity up. I say we get on over there. All righty. Yeah. And until next week. Self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. Yay, I like that. And cut on that.